Welcome to the Old World Fanatics, your Warhammer fantasy podcast to quench your hobby thirst for all things Warhammer, the Old World. I'm one of your hosts, Gomo, and I'm here just today. It's just Andrew and myself, mate. How you going? Yeah, I felt like I just chilling. talked to you like, you know, a couple of hours ago, which I probably <laughs> did. Yeah. Playing Warhol. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> possibly. Uh, we've got a – Papa Nurgle has visited one of our co-hosts, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. he really – Josh really did try bake it. We were going to record last night and um, pushed it back a night to see if he was better and I think he got worse. <laughs> so, uh, the old plague. Uh, we said it's fine. You don't need to. It's all good. Um, yeah, yeah. so yeah, Josh, I think that's his first ever podcast. He hasn't made it on. We've both yeah. skipped, I think. He's here in spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're definitely going to be rambling today. It might, uh, people are going to laugh at this. I'm going to say it might be a shorter episode. Um, but yeah. when is Ho- that ever Hobby happened? might be, but, hobby might be compressed. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's right. Hobby. <laughs> and there's probably no vet section. <laughs> so yeah. it's all good. It. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. Um, yeah, I felt like we've um, – I, I, I don't know. We were starting to think about going through some rules and stuff with Josh and all this sort of oh, stuff, yeah. like different magic laws and stuff, but then uh, obviously he's out. So um, we thought we'd cover <clears throat> the news and what we've been up to, you and me. We've been playing a couple of games of Warhol and you're prepping for mm. the uh, Sydney – the ShireCon, which we chatted to Matt about last week. So I'm trying yep. to help you do that, I guess, by being a punching bag or whatever. But um, uh, we'll run through yeah. that and that's about it. A, pu- a punching bag that punches back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah. much. So, um, yeah, that should be good because I thought maybe chat about our experience as well, playing online and how we're finding that, but yep. also um, throw you in the bus a bit and see, you know, how, how are the dwarves performing, if the, you know, is there changes? I know we're halfway through a game, which we'll get into, um, but it'd be good just to sort of have a bit more of a – you know, relaxed chat, not so much segments. We don't really have a main topic apart from yeah, <coughs> a yeah, bit of yeah. that, really. So, yeah. Mm. Cool. Well, we, before we get on, man, do you want – I'll just shout out our usual patron shout-out that we've got. Um, you know, it's uh, obviously we podcast every week. Um, we would do it anyway, but we do have a Patreon for those who don't know or first-time listeners of Old World Fanatics. You can vi- mm. see us at patreon.com slash Fanatics. We have a growing – list of supporters it's only two dollars a month that just helps us pay for this software and, and then stuff like that so we give you guys a shout out to the current supporter list it's getting a bit bigger but i'll uh we'll go through and we have a sneaky one that's always in there that seems to change names that we we don't know until we read it out so we'll find out <laughs> so anyway, yeah we've got yeah, starkey yeah. king of the north so thanks guys griff jess uh wood uh, wood duck i should say sean s josh griffiths ninanium which i can never pronounce matt Daniel Broadstock, Jonathan Wengler, Gilthos Draconis, Cameron Bloom, Elliot Mitchum, Chris Turnbull, Harrison Nuzo, Gilthos, oh, sorry, Gilthos is a free and a paid, so I'll just, sorry, he's so awesome. He, he wants to be on both <laughs> levels, which is great. Uh, one of our Scott. best YouTube commenters. Thanks, Gilthos. Uh, yeah. Julian Diesel, Cameron Atkinson, uh, Richard, William Payne, Robert, Suti Bumspitz. <laughs> It's getting a bit – now, I don't want to presuppose this, but is the avatar changing as well? I can't I can't see. Now, we're not sharing this, so people can't see it, but I'm wondering – I don't know what that avatar is. Um, oh, you can't even see it, Andrew, either, can you? See, I've been in there, so it's definitely a surprise for you. But anyway, yes, thanks, Suti Bums. Bits, um, Andrew McAllister, Bobby Gherkin, Gumwich, Sean Ritchie, Todd Lloyd, and Chapsticks, the uh, the OG. So thanks, guys. Yeah. These guys just help us, um, as I said, go a little way to helping us run the podcast, so to speak. Uh, if you're – you know, you don't need to do any of that um, at all. Um, but if you are watching us on YouTube or you didn't know we're on YouTube as well, uh, jump over there on just search Old World Fanatics as well and hit like, subscribe and the bell button because it just helps the growth of the yep. channel. So thanks so much for that. Uh, anyway, that's enough crapping on about um, shout outs and trying to get more <laughs> followers. <laughs> what's uh, What's been happening in the news? It's Nothing old worldish, so to speak, but we have had a couple of little AOS stuff, which I think is related to old world. So I thought we'd mm. want to cover that a bit. Um, and while I'm saying that, I should actually prep the screen, which I should have done earlier. I had something else up. 
Um, cool. So the first thing that happened last week, and it's caused a bit of uh, controversy in the AOS. It's funny, isn't it? Isn't? Um, because mm. Fantasy Battle's been dead for technically so long, it feels like... Yep. So, well, sorry, I should actually. Let me not jump ahead. Some of Games Workshop's basically squatting some of the armies in AOS as they're preparing for Age of Sigma 4. Um, and, you know, we knew this was coming. Um, we've already seen it happen. You know, they were mentioning about stuff, pulling, you know, Black Orc units and stuff and that yeah. they're coming back in the old world and all that. So, like, it's not technically a surprise. It's probably a little surprise that they've squatted, I would technically say, definitely an entire army and I guess two really with the bone splitters. Um, yeah. Which technically they hadn't done before. They just removed models, is that right, from a faction? And this is the first time they've actually pulled one out. Do you know? Because you played a bit of AOS, didn't you? Oh, I've played the no. smallest amount. Right. Okay. <laughs> I've collected them. I don't play a lot. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, yeah. The... My, my understanding was that, yeah. Yeah. So they're basically, um, you know, and a crap ton of um, uh, Stormcast models as well, which I won't even attempt to tell you what which ones have come out and so I have no nah. idea about them. The only thing I'd say is in this There's... picture I'm looking at, the ones on these dragony, no, what are they? Griffiny looking liony things. They look almost yeah, new. Well, so it's sort of crazy to see <laughs> if they're going. Wow. Like, but then it tells you how long they have been got around. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. They've got so many models. It's like, I, I mean, think it's, it's just Space Marine sort of, you know, play. Yeah, yeah. Same sort of issue. Yeah. yeah. Which, and but, the, I yeah. mean, as an observer on the outside, Stormcast, they're sort of, they're changing the look a little bit, do you think? They're sort of adding a bit more personality mm. a little bit and stuff like that. So maybe some of the older kits are just too boring. I mean, these guys look pretty good, but I don't know. Again, I, I can't comment. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had a lot of the guys in the starter sort of sets. Like that. That's one thing that Age of Sigma did really good is you could pick up these little like $50 boxes and mm. just get two two little forces sort of thing um yeah but yeah I, I think they weren't very strong um so i wouldn't be surprised if they're the sort of models these older ones that they're sort of getting rid of they're not really current in the, the new oh definitely like they're all yeah oh you mean like even whole units that they don't even bring the unit they're not replacing the unit type with a new sculpt they're actually just removing it yeah yeah i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if that's the way it's gone down um yeah. as such just just the stats don't sort of line up um so it's kind of you know 40k a bit like they just oh, there's this churn over almost of mm. you know models and powers and meta so it's just the way it, the beast well, is, it always I, is I guess <laughs> yeah yeah um but the ones that actually affect us sort of um mm is they've pulled the whole beast, beast of chaos um and brought them which is interesting because um obviously that was one of them the and look, i think the writing was on the wall because it's one of the armies that apart from chaos is definitely in both yeah yeah pretty much model for model in both games old world and this and so it was a bit weird that on one hand you heard stuff like oh vampire counts and stuff are all in aos and not in old world but then why beastmen so it was obviously the writing, yeah. writing was on the wall um <clears throat> Then, you know, and now they're just bringing them, repackaging them all up and then saying to the AOS players, oh, by the way, you can go use your models in old, all Hammer Old World. Yeah. Uh, and then you get that sort of kickback and it's funny because they actually came from there. But it just, show, again, shows you how long AOS has been around and how long fantasy has been dead that you've got this whole range of people who weren't mm. even around initially. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of funny because people are saying, I saw some comments, it was about the giant and it was also about... Oh, there's a couple of ones where people are like, oh, could I use this in Warhammer the Old World? Would pe people care? And people are like, uh, that is a Warhammer fantasy figure. So, no, <laughs> people won't care. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's just funny. Some young punk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Bone Splitters, which, um, I mean, they're I just, love yeah, they're the old Savage Orcs. Mm. Now, obviously, we don't have Savage Orcs as such in... Uh, well, goblin tribes but we do obviously with the mob you know you just you just do it but i wonder if um over time that might change again and they bring them back properly as a separate 
line item or not. But I mean, obviously for now they're not, and they're just coming back. I'd imagine. I mean, they haven't said they're repackaging them. Nah. But, and they aren't, uh, yeah. aren't in any of the you know the promo pictures in the Arcane Journal. So I wonder what's going to happen if they're gone or not. Oh, it'd be a shame. I I like that aspect of the Savage Orcs. Like I think they're mm. it's probably my favourite. As in like the crazy. You know, they're always talking about the the Savage Orcs are like the the most bestial. Like mm. you know, you get your your normal Orcs are sort of a bit you know normal. We're also savage. They're just like so, total oh, so just crazy. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah <clears> I just, wonder if um, because I mean, do you you follow forty k at all? Too not really. Like, have you seen the Beast Snagger Boys that came out in yeah yeah ninth third? I think. Um, you know, it'd be cool to see because I mean, I've got a you know, obviously I played eighth, so eighth Warhammer fantasy, so I've got a lot of savage orcs because that's pretty much what you have to have. <laughs> um, but they're they're all I don't know, I don't overly rate the sculpts these days. Um, maybe it's the paint oh, job no. on them, you know, they're a bit yeah, bright, yeah. Um, oh, the beast boys I, look I'd really love that. good. Do you? Yeah, you yeah. Love them. yeah, yeah. I, the, I think I've, maybe I've contract. just painted too many and looked at them for too long. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see some new ones, just like bringing a bit of that beast snagger stuff in there. You know, a little bit of the squig, you know, um, yeah, squig sort of, you know, tarp. Like what are they called? The troll hide pants? Well, that's the trolls. No, but oh, you yeah, know, like yeah. the beast snagger boys are wearing the hides from the squigs and stuff. Mm. I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, just obviously they're going to bring beastmen. They're going to repackage that launch it out as mm. old world but i wonder i wonder what they'll do here they'll probably just do it maybe it's a wave three down the track you know and they just bring them out because i mean why wouldn't they yeah well that's it you think almost like because they're producing it currently it's almost like they'll take it directly off the lot sort of thing mm. um it's not like bretonians and tune kings where it's almost like they've had to remake the process of actually producing them um, yeah. So yeah, you think almost if anything that'd be a pretty quick turnaround. Um, yeah, but yeah, hopefully. one thing I was going to mention with these, um, I don't mm. know if anybody, well, I'm sure they have seen because everybody these days has Facebook and Marketplace, but there are some bargains getting around. Um, unfortunately, oh, I've no, got way too you, many armies. You're going to make no, 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 a basement no, army, aren't you? No. <laughs> I've seen some if you, 300, if you, 300 Australian mate, dollars, which yeah. is cheap as, and they yeah. were like 150 models with the the giant guys, like multiple giant oh, guys. Man. Like multiple if you find, maybe you like, maybe we need to talk off the uh, air, and if you ever see that, just get it. Because I don't, I've never played, I've only played against Beastmen. Um, yeah. If there was yeah, Beastmen so. hanging around, I'd probably consider getting because it's that army just I don't have and if we play on you know battle reports we haven't done as many as we want to but you know it'd be nice just to have go that halves and, and, and a, chaos yeah, yeah. You, know, you know yeah um I bet, was that painted or unpainted that you saw nah it's unpainted but yeah that's fine yeah. I mean, beastman wouldn't be hard to paint yeah cool <laughs> bit of fur, yeah, bit of blood yeah. I think that'll disappear quick though but yeah, uh, yeah cool yeah. yeah well I mean I won't I mean, there's all the Stormcast. I won't go too much into um, just into uh, the other one. Sorry, I was just having a look though quickly. Um, mm. it, like the Bone Splitters, they just say what's going out. But if you go to Beast Case, it says it's coming in Old World. So that's the bit that worries me a little bit that, I mean, surely they'll repackage them. Because people will need Savage Orcs for their Orcs. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Like, scroll up to the um, the the Skaven that are going. Oh yeah, and yeah. some of those sculpts are ancient. Like, oh god, yeah. I think didn't like, they uh, was weren't they the oldest? Weren't they eighty yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that? Or I don't know what was. Or I can't remember. Someone will correct us in the comments. But I think some of them were the oldest. They were in current, you know, production. Oh yeah, such. yeah. Some of them are nuts. Like those old school rat ogres. Like there. Mm, oh jeez. Mm. They're, yeah. they're old. Like the Island of Blood one. Well, there's only two sculpts there, but I mean, the the original sort of old school rat ogres, like they sort of almost, they, some of the old Skaven, they're almost dog looking, like not as rat yeah. looking, like they kind of had that big snout and yeah, 
it it'd be good to see them go and hopefully well we'll talk about obviously mm. well we can jump to the do you want to jump to the next article because there's probably not much more we can drag out of that so yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, move on to it, man. That's fine. Like the new, obviously, we've seen a few of the newer Skaven sculpts now for AOS. Yeah, they're cool. Mm. I'll bring up my my close closer images. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, them. just while you're bringing that up, I was just saying. Um, obviously, we know AOS and Stormcast are now the launch factions for AOS four. Um, so they're using it as a you know a time to totally redo. The Skaven lineup and right down to, you know, just clan rats and stuff, which is really cool to see. Um, yeah. I guess I'll table for the – I'll let you talk now, but I'll probably, you know, what does it mean for the future of Skaven in Old World, I guess is the question. But, yeah, what were you going to say about the the look of them? Oh, just the sculpts. Like I've got mm. oh, 100 out of these Island of Blood clan rats. I actually thought they were pretty good sculpt um, and they don't fit – to you know out of the way just for realism in that fantasy realism compared yeah, to yeah. that you know you get some of those older sculpts so it's almost like yes. you put the when they've got the size difference you sort of got the older one and the new one and a that there's two things is size isn't a whole lot different except for the new ones seem a little bit chunkier and a little bit wider as in like um more yeah. dynamic so like the models yeah. you know that the towels bit out there and like the pose is wider um yeah are you looking at that yeah. one with the stormcast and the, the old stormcast storm yeah, yeah 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 so is that clan rat or storm worm and that's a clan that's a that's clan, clan rat yeah, on the left no, yeah yeah clan rat yeah, yeah. the yeah. island blood one yeah. um but yeah no no they're they're really they're really good i mean they're Totally. Um, By the look of that, though, the the scale creep. If anything, they're actually shorter. But like I said, they're a bit, maybe a bit, you know, taking up a bit more room. But when you move them on to twenty fives, um, mm. you know, they're going to be, they're going to be Apes used. I would imagine if you know yeah, if we see yeah. a lot of people using Skaven or not, that's the biggest question. But um, yeah, you know, with that and and even if they're bringing out, because I think we've seen some leaks, but not really good shots of the sort of crazy weapons teams i'll say yeah. that are coming yeah. and i feel like you'll still see them because even if it's not the exact you know the old school oh, weapon yeah, team, it's yeah. something newer i mean people will just proxy it and it'll look bloody awesome um yeah hopefully these kits are i don't know is aos gone a little bit it's not so much um it's all a lot of mono mono pose still isn't it especially these um, ones these will be push fit ones that are in the box so they like yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah, true. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, if you only got ten sculpts, like, if I went go back up, and sorry for people listening to us, yeah. and not looking at YouTube. There's a um, a gallery sort of widget of it looks to to me it looks like ten different sculpts, but I might be wrong of mm. clan rats. Um, but you know, given that you want a lot of clan rats, uh, and there's no slaves. Oh, hang on, they got rid of. Did they get rid of slaves in Old World anyway? Uh, we haven't done our Skaven review, but I think they might have. I can't remember. Did they? Um, oh, thought, but in any case, you didn't really uh, – yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, you're going to need a lot of clan rats. I'm just, you know, be annoying yeah. if they only had 10 sculpts, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. But hopefully they're fairly – you know, it'd be good to – I mean, they also have a lot of extra options and stuff these days on the AOS sprues and stuff. So hopefully a lot of kit bashing, hopefully, across our fingers. Yeah, I mean, they look well, good, got... and they look easy to paint with contrast. <laughs> they <laughs> they'd come out so easy. Even though you got to paint hundreds of them. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean, you know, you slop around and it goes over the lines a bit. Yeah, you don't yeah, really care because yeah, they're yeah. so muted nah. tones and stuff. Yeah, it's like um, zombies. You're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What? Just do you have anything else that like was there anything around the actual? Um, no, they must have multiple scopes because that's 10 and there's a standard bearer. So um, I don't know if you can see if it's that guy somewhere. I don't know. Um, that's, yeah, is there a bald guy there? It's the same bald dude with the... Not really. Uh, so maybe it is, yeah. We'll yeah, can, no. Maybe we're looking for a fair few sculpts, which would be good. Um, yeah, what do you reckon it yeah. meant like... 
So I love seeing this. And then I also get a little worried and a bit confused that, um, yeah, they said the scope of the projects change, which is good, but mm. I still can't see them anytime soon expecting, say, Skaven to ever be in the old world. Do you know what I mean? Like they're putting all the effort into yeah. AOS Skaven. So I would imagine at some point Ogres will get redone potentially and they're going to be in AOS. And so the one basically what I'm getting at is, is are we ever going to see the move over? I think there was a rumour that Vamps might be the first one. Um but yeah, you know who bloody knows. <laughs> well, that's why I didn't know if we we're going to bring up in the discussion the uh, the the Truma little list of Trumas that was leaked. Um, I might have to try oh, and find that. You, can you find that? Because yes, that came out, and then yeah. that would have been perfect news for this episode. And I forgot about it. Yeah, there has yeah. been news. <laughs> Where did that come? I sent that to you guys, did not I? You did. Yeah, you sent it. I uh, sent it. Dig it up. Dig it up in our oh. chat. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I find these things, throw it in Messenger, and then I forget to put it in the podcast notes. <laughs> um, it was good, and it, it seems quite legit. Um, just it, everything in there sort of makes sense. And Oh, I can bring it right up here if we want. Oh, you got it? I was trying to find it. I don't know if this will actually work. Oh, yeah, there it is. Bang. Did that work? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got my big fat so sausage fingers trying to scroll through. this was a rumour. This is news, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what date it was. Probably a week ago. Yeah. Or something. Um, yeah about so that. for those who don't know, I don't know where it originated from. Um, well, I mean, they're saying the Warhammer Fantasy Discord server. So that's not our Discord. That's not the Warhammer Australia or World Discord. It's sort of um, another one that uh, the guys from Herdstone started. So if you guys are after some mm. other podcasts and don't know about that, um, it's probably the biggest Warhammer Fantasy Discord server, um, which is probably it's definitely worth getting on that one. Um, but anyway, so this is what was covered. I'll just read it out, especially for listeners. Um, Cathay has a written Cathay has a written army list similar to Total War Warhammer's version. Um, Probably not unsurprising. I think we might have heard that before, but that's good to see. Yeah. Uh, Skaven was specified, specifically cited as unlikely to appear anytime soon for Old World. Perhaps it's karma for my post yesterday. I'm not sure what that was. The re- uh, maybe he posted the leaks. <laughs> Skaven, I don't know. The oh, reason yeah. is perhaps <laughs> the focus of Age of Sigmar's fourth edition. So, again, that's what we just said, I guess. Like, this is the thing. Yep. There's no way they're going to put it in AOS and then, uh, you know, go, oh, we're also going to re- like. They're not going to then package up the old Skaven and re-release them, I don't think, you know, at the moment because why would they? Yeah. Um, no. Nah. You know, who knows? Oh, they might do some made-for-orders or something. I don't know. Beastman's armies of infamy include a Minotaur horde and a call of the wild army, which uses magic related to the new lore, including the Arcane Journal. Um, cool. Ooh. Obviously, it feels like Beastmen are coming very soon, which they might even mention this in this one. I'm not sure if it was. Um, so that's cool. Uh, mm. d- not sure what. Minotaur Horde, easy to understand. What's it called? The Wild Army. Um, I'm guessing something to do with like... Is that like the centaurs and all the weird stuff? Yeah, because, yeah, because, you know, they're a bit foresty. I, I would be mm. almost assuming maybe a bit more skirmishy, ambushy, sort of wood elf yeah, type Yeah, okay, so, okay, army. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. That's That's just my... Assumption. Yeah. Uh, Empire's armies of infamy include a Nuln gun army of infamy and a Midnight army. I mean, that's awesome. I reckon those two. The only that is, I guess, the only thing with Empire is maybe, and maybe we still see this. There's nothing saying we wouldn't. That it could also be its own release, like not having the two. Mm. You know how like we've got orcs and dwarves coming out very similar. Yeah. And we get into this maybe here. I can't remember, but. Um, People are saying it's Beastmen and Wood Elves and that might mean that's the next two. And because Beastmen just got yeah. cold and they've been talking about it, maybe this is coming sooner rather than later. I don't know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the Empire one would be cool because the whole, you know, the scattering of the Empire and the sort of no no Emperor would be nice to see almost all the main provinces get sort of their own army. But Yeah, yeah. Um, but Midnight, I mean, having that in there is going to be cool. Um, yeah. Not sure about the Nolan Gun Army, but it'd still be fun because maybe there's some variants, you know, that add different war machines mm. or something. 
Um, yeah, it would be nice not to have just a a style of a gun line army. Like, hopefully they can bring up some. They flavor. had an old one in six, didn't they? Wasn't there a back of the book? Was it null? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll get comments on that one. Uh, various mm. Forge World units include the Skill Skin Wolves, Firma, Gore Bull, BSB. So this has gone back to chaos stuff, has yep. it? BSB and the Periton will be returning. It was stated specific, specifically that the Chaos Mammoth will not be returning. I'm not a massive Forge World um, knowledge expert, so I'm not sure, um, you know. It, funny, though, they said the Femir. I mean, is that like the old Femir models? Did they actually release some? That's crazy. Or were they I've, added? Got, I've got a... Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I got the... Got the Fairy Tone, I don't know. He's uh, the weird. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how to say that one. <laughs> You've got that It's a too, pretty cool you? model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I actually, when I was trying to go um, make my uh, orc model in ninth, I was going to have that as the, um, uh, whatever that beast was that you could summon. You the know, the, the, oh, the rock one. The wild, wild. No, nah, no. Nah, it was like a wild oh. beast or something. You could oh, right. Yeah. Summon oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. the magic thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, that'd be an awesome little summoner. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, apparently there is an FAQ plan for the Arcane Journals once all of them have been released. I think that's okay, but I don't think that stops an FAQ coming out soon. I think we've had no. multiple confirmations it's very soon. And as of yeah. what's the date here, 9th of April, um, We've also had other people contact us saying that it's within a week or so. So I'm like, I mean, yeah. hopefully they're right. I mean, yeah, you know, that'd be bloody awesome. It'd be so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you you heard it here, tenth uh, or eighth? You know, because <laughs> it it's been said everywhere else. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, did you did you have the, the there was a page count you heard as well, wasn't there? Oh, probably. Was yeah, the I can't page remember. It, it, it was a big, big one. wasn't it? it? Was like. Yeah. Yeah, 12, 12 pages or something? Yeah, something like that. Like, that was another thing something I sent like you that. now. I can't remember. My brain has just not been yeah, on yeah. this week. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, but, yes, it sounds like it. The good thing is it's going to hopefully, it, you know, covers a lot of the stuff that everyone's having to deal with, yeah. especially these TOs yeah. having to put out these pre-tournament, you know, um, FAQs mm. sort of. Uh, finally, <laughs> this one was given um, – sorry, on the wrong screen – Finally, this one wasn't given much information to as it was a bit muddled, but there is a long-term plan for Vampire Counts to be the first army to be made core from the missing armies, though the way it was described is a faraway concept and you shouldn't expect it soon. So um, sort of what we just were talking about before I realised we hadn't covered this. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think anything, you know, when they talk about the scope of the thing changed, I feel like that is like, you know, more confidence into maybe second edition. Um and yeah. then we'll see some of these ones maybe coming back. Right now, you know, you're not going to see any change in the next couple of years. We're just going to get probably what, you know, get all these other arcane journals out and, yeah. um, you know, so that's that's fine. But it is, I don't know, it's encouraging as well to see that, you know, we might see some of these old ones pop back in. I feel like yeah, Josh isn't on the podcast, so I'm going to give – it's not even a spoiler alert, but it was something I wanted to bring up around vampire counts. The other day yep. on the podcast, we hadn't read the book, that the novel. Now you don't read the novels, do you? The land, you know, the Heroes Which of the novel? Lance that came out for the, yeah, on the launch day. No, no, Did no, you read no, no. I I listened to the audio book. Oh, you yeah. have okay. Oh, cool. Oh, well, you're further ahead than me because I'm still reading it. Okay. Well, anyone listen to this? There's going to be. It's not even spoiler. I just want to talk about the appearance of certain faction that is in that book. So I don't think that's spoiling anything, is it? It's, no. no, you're shaking your head. So hopefully, but if you don't, maybe skip ahead a few minutes if you really don't want to hear anything. But obviously there's a bit in there where they get attacked by what appears to be uh, a bunch of vampire yeah, stuff, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Vampire counts, definitely the terror guys. I love how they described the terror guys, <laughs> like it was cool. Like, um, yeah, and obviously yeah. that book was commissioned, you know, I don't know, but a year or two before Old World came out. So mm. I can't That's see them cool. doing that and adding them in there. Yeah, they're like, and they even call them like flesh, like flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fl like it was almost AOS y in a way, sort of. Yeah, well, it was. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just. You know what I mean? Like it felt like this was done potentially before it got sort of ratcheted back a bit. 
yeah, I don't know yeah. what your thoughts are listening to it, but um, you know, if you read and saw what's coming in, what was a, uh, eventually released by the old world for the old world version one or whatever you want to call it, first edition, mm. um, why would you ever put that in the novel? I just felt it was a bit weird. Um, and yeah. So it, again, it's another thing that makes me feel like, yeah, okay, you know, this is just a reduced scope, see what happens. And then, yeah, there's going to still be plans to have all this back, um, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah. Again, that's me thinking that. I've got no bloody idea. But Well, I think I think these factions have never, like, they're not deleted. They're just no, like saying, no. oh, they're not, they're not in the, the current timeline. They're, they're not a major faction in the current timeline. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, they would be silly not to do vampire counts as one of the first armies. Yeah. There's so many people. They're so popular as well. Uh, and, yeah. I mean, the amount of figures. And, yeah, I mean, mm. I don't want to go on, I won't go on too much. This is the last bit we'll talk about AOS. But um, I know there was some discussions around why they do this and the profit and loss stuff and the business. I just feel like I agree with all that and I see why they do those things. It doesn't bother me. Like, you know, I've run businesses all yeah. cool. At the same time, I feel like, come on, guys, it's not hard to come up with other ways to uh, no. attribute sales to certain channels and stuff like that and have, mul- you know, parts that go to multiple things. I mean, cars are probably yeah, doing yeah. that for bloody years. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <For fuck's sake. laughs> so to hear that as a excuse, yeah. I, I think it's a bit naive. I don't think it's just that either. Like, I, I can't – I mean, maybe – I don't work there. Maybe they are that dumb as well. I don't think so. I think there'd be other reasons as well. But it's not yeah. – it is not uncommon to have, you know – bill of material things going to multiple things and you can work out where they come from. I know it's a bit different because yeah. you're internally buying it and building stuff and this is selling to the public, but I don't know. I still feel like it wouldn't be that hard. You know, nah, I mean, worse. a skeleton, skeleton's a skeleton, isn't it? It's like, well, who, who cares? Yeah. Like, Anyway, just as in the, like if they are that pedantic about, you know, assigning, which they should. I mean, you know, business units internally have to, you know, have to fund their own existence. Pretty common in a business. They're not mm. charities. Um, yeah, cool. Anyway, let's. that's probably enough news and more news than I even thought. That's why I'm laughing the fact that I thought it'd be a short episode. Um, cool. Do you want to jump onto a little bit of hobby? Uh, I can show you my hobby, what I've been doing. It's just basing. Oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't even do that. I've just... <laughs> I'm, I'm fin- I've finished... You're still all, going. All the guys You're still are going on, those on bases. Yeah, so they're all um, half are painted, half are undercoated. Um, they're all in the new bases. Um, so I've got to... I was gonna flock today, and I got I got a bit busy, and then I was just like, "Ah, oh, stuff it." Um, mm, mm. So I, I did didn't get got, around to it. Hang on, when's the tournament next? Not this weekend, next weekend. Yeah, yeah, but Iron Drakes are the probably the easiest dwarf you're ever gonna paint. Um, yeah, true. Yeah. Because they don't have a beard because the beard's covered in a mask, so you you can literally get away with two or three colors. Um, mm. Yeah, How, it's just do people hasn't it got a bit of trim like is or not really? It's just you could just yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but you don't need bit, to do bit, that. You just wash and over the metal and you're done. Dry brush. Yeah, just just metal, um, bit of trim, wash, and then a little bit of bit of highlight. That's light trim highlight. That's that's it. Yeah. Like it's not. I mean that that that's my. I need to paint these, and I've got. Mm. Well, I do have time, but I, I you know. I, I faff around with my time. Do you reckon, <laughs> are you the type that like it'll be Thursday night and then next week and you'll be like smashing them out or like do you ever take paint to a tournament? Nah, you're not that you're done by then. Nah, nah. I'm I'm definitely I'll be I'll be paying somebody before that. I'll just okay. <laughs> I, I don't like being too rushed because at the yeah. best best of times I'm just not organized so <laughs> at least with painting i just try and make sure that that is sorted that's my my yeah. one thing that's cool uh, excuse mm. me guys you want an um, you go? yeah so i've got a i've done a little bit not too much if anything i cleaned some my, my desk was getting a bit crazy there with um like seven different projects on the go just because my eight 
ADHD, I swear I am. Um, but I think that's pretty common in this, this hobby. Um, yeah. So I clean it up a little bit. Like, because I, you know, obviously I'm still trying to get through the Tomb Kings, but I do get a little bit, um, you know, I just like to try some new stuff. So the other day um, when the Orc and Goblin stuff came out, they they put that painting Orc and Goblin thing and they had the heavy metals oh. colour scheme thing. And I went, oh. And I'm, I like the Mantis warrior green contrast paint on my orcs i'm going to use that like i've been doing it with my 40k orcs and it's easy it's one coat and then i just i do some highlighting with like ogre and camo like depend on the good ones or um or like around their lips yeah. or the characters I'll, I'll do more of it and then the other ones you know won't do any um but yeah the Eddie metal painting guy came out for their one their new skin tones you know that article we talked about last week with all the you know they're yeah, trying yeah. to sort of split them up um and i was looking at it going i've never tried to paint that, if you know what I mean, like I mean, I'm like I don't really care about styles and every metal style versus whatever. But in terms of just what they wrote and how they do, like the soft shit. Now, this is where I would have loved to have Josh on because he might know more than us. I don't know, but you know, they talk about like soft shades and deep shades and like the glazes, and it's all with normal paints. It's not with you know any of the contrasts or washes. You don't use any yeah. of that. So I thought I'll give it a go. So I went and got all the. I only need like two paints from that I didn't have for that sort of orc green flesh. Um, yeah. And I tried it on one orc. Now, admittedly, I did it on like a pretty old orc, so probably not the best sculpt either. Um, and I should have yeah, taken yeah. a picture of it, but I'm being, I was going to do a video, a YouTube video. I thought, but I'll do one first. <laughs> it's just fucking yeah, dog yeah. shit. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, I'm just so bad at like, because I would imagine they do so many layers, like to layer up. Yeah. And then I looked a video for like later on, I went, well, hang on, what's a deep shade? Look, and I, there's a guy who's an ex Citadel painter and he, he does it on there and stuff. And, um, and the amount of like, you can really see that the first layers they're putting down are the shade, you know what I mean? And then they're layering yeah. up to the mid tones and I tried and I just, oh, uh, yeah, the, and admittedly it's my first one. So it, it probably doesn't look too bad, yeah, yeah. but I'm like, this does not look as good as me just doing a contrast with a couple of highlights, yeah. uh, plus the time taken. Um, so then I just left with, I suck at it, but that's, you always suck the first time. So, and I'm not gonna, I'm not yeah. saying I want to do it to paint an army like that, but you know, I don't know. Now I'm thinking maybe I should out. talk yeah. to some people who know how to do it better and actually try and do it just for the, you know, like just so you're doing something different and getting better at painting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, I didn't make a video. I was going to, I went, I'm not putting this uh, in on the internet. <laughs> this looks like crap. <laughs> But uh, I don't know, maybe I should so people can see that it's, you know, everyone sucks at some point trying to paint up. Yeah, anyway, I'll have to, hopefully some listeners might have some tips on um, sort of that, you know, manually yeah, glazing yeah. and shading with normal paints and thinning them down and all that sort of stuff. But uh, So it's that funny was a bit of like, hobby. Oh, you just get that broad range of, you know, people, the effort they put in. So, like, you get some mm. people who'd spend you know, hundreds of hours, like, you know, on their army. And then you get other people, I'm probably not the entire other way, but I'm, I'm towards yeah. the other end of the scale of just trying to smash it out. Um, so, like, it looks decent on the tabletop, but, you know, just don't pick it up and look too close because <laughs> yeah. um, sort, of, sort of on that scale. Like, it's just, it's it's funny how broad, broad the scale is. Um, and then it just comes down to personality, like you were saying. Like some people, they just love painting. They love the intricacy. And there's others like me, just just get over and just try and just get it on the board sort of thing. Yeah, and I'm definitely like uh, – like my stuff looks cool, but it's definitely like it's built to be in an army. You know what I mean? Some of my – well, there's a couple of my Empire pieces and my Orc Wyvern I'm pretty proud of as saying, that, you know, that's a good model. Um, and I'd have it in, like, yeah. I do have a display cabinet and all that stuff, but it's not obviously not. Um, and it's pretty much paint by the numbers as well, my stuff. Like, I follow, like, like I don't, I haven't gone too much off the wall a lot of the times, um, which I probably could get better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, but your speaking armies of devil, look good on, I was going to say that they look good on the board. I wouldn't say it's like mm. a run of the mill average army. I'd say 
if there no, was a... well, no, and I won one painting thing at like a small Sydney tournament yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah, no, they. So I think they, they look, look good, they look good together, and I can get them out quite mm. fast doing it. So like, I'm not by any means, I don't think, a bad painter. But you know, it's like everything no. with my guitar playing, whatever. Um, you always hit those plateaus where, and you could do that plateau for fucking years. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, yeah. but it sort of, it's got to put that know, extra effort you in. You got to get yeah. the extra effort yeah. and pain to jump to the next one. And I'm starting to consider, yeah. obviously once I get some of these, I want to get a few old world armies done and out before I worry about this. But at some point then I thought, mm. okay, well maybe if I'm being serious and this game's not going away again, maybe I should, put a bit more effort in at some point to learn to get to another level. Uh, maybe that's airbrushing more, you know, because I use an airbrush for, you know, some stuff, but not really painting, you know, um, just, yeah. I don't know, there's a heap of things. Hey, um, just quickly on that, just while we're talking hobby, obviously the um, Golden Demon US one stuff went out and they had an old world category. So that's crazy, which I'll just quickly skim to. This is going to suck for podcasts. Sorry, guys. So if you know, haven't seen the Adepticon yeah. Golden Demon winners, just search for on Warhammer, Warcom, they come up. But I just want to bring up the winner. I think it was the winner. Yeah. Look, look at this fucking level figure. Up. It's a <laughs> it's a reflection, but it's not a reflection. He's actually uh, yeah, duplicated yeah, yeah. the figure. Have yeah. you, did you see this? Have you seen this before? No. No? Yeah? You just saw that it now so too. Good. Yeah, it's yeah. I only looked at it today. I mean, I think the article came out today or something, but I was like, wow. So if people haven't seen it, like it's, yeah, he's basically got two figures super, like, I don't know, how, how do you say it, Andrew? Like it's like it's like a reflection into a pond, but yeah, the reflection yeah, is yeah. the other figure underneath. Um, the creativity on that mm. is next level. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> um while I'm on it, though, it's pretty funny. I'll, I want to bring up um, the old world category. Where were we? Here it is. Warhammer, the old world category. That is that an old world figure? Or is that a forge world thing? Isn't that AOS? <laughs> Isn't that a modified oh, AOS no. Trogoth? I'm and then sure. the, uh, the silver is definitely a Brett one, so that's all great. Um, but the um, the bronze is an AOS Cities of Sigma figure. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's like just going back to our first point that, uh, of course, people are using AOS figures for old world. Um, anyway, I yeah. better shut up about that because I keep having it's funny. But anyway, uh, quickly on my <laughs> other stuff, though. Um, yeah, you and me got some games in which we're going to start talking about in a minute. Um, and we also did the Arcane yep. Journal came out, so I went through some of that. But really the only other hobby I did was um, I got these resin buildings in from... Oh, that's wrong. Um, yeah, where's my share? Stop sharing. Uh, not invite. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, um, from... Somewhere, I can't remember. It was on Etsy, but I can't remember the store or whatever. And, like, I could get, you know, obviously I've got some Kickstarter stuff coming from um, Tabletop Empire. Not Tabletop Empire. What's it called? Tabletop. What's the second word? Can't remember. The guys who do the really good resin buildings that Josh has and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. They're cool, but... Um, you know, I, I hate asking people to print me stuff a lot. So, I, so obviously we keep harassing Josh about that, saying I should just buy <laughs> buy him a printer. And he is looking at a yeah, new yeah. printer. So I'm like, man, just let me pay half or something and then I don't feel so bad. Uh, even though he says, <laughs> no, I'll print whatever you want. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, just to avoid that, I just, I don't know, I saw them on Etsy and because I'll bring up one picture. So I have paint ages ago on Etsy and I'm talking three years ago I bought this cottage that's on the right hand that I finally painted and Andrew's mm. played, uh, you know, I've had it on the board once on one of our battle reports. But uh, this is the only one I had and I threw out all my old buildings that I made when I was a teenager because they were just falling apart and so I wanted to buy, I want to have enough to have a cool little village and stuff. Um, town, and this yeah. guy in Canada was selling one that has five different ones and they're for role playing and stuff because uh, you can take all the lids yeah. off. The lids, the roofs and the floors and they're all, got, they're all interior as well. Whereas the other one that I have isn't. It's just, you know, it's all glued on. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the cool thing is, I mean, the thing I loved about these too, they just, they literally came like this. The other one I had to like, it was full flat pack Ikea style, you know, and like you have to like pin stuff because I didn't want it to like glue and just fall apart. 
Whereas these are all just, this is how it came. Um, pulled yeah. it out, wrapped it in cardboard and it was it. Um, so I've taken the smallest one and just starting the same contrast base coats and I'll, I'll, I'll doing, I mean, this is literally just before the podcast that's still wet. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go through it. He's, that's the smallest, it's like a little blacksmith one. Or, I don't know, it's got like a little oh, yeah, balcony. Yeah, yeah. It's like a really small building. Um, but I thought yeah. I'll try that one first. Once it's done, I'll be able to see how close they look compared to the old one I did. Um, and now the, the size difference, um, it's a little smaller as you can see, you know what I mean? Like I've got, that's probably the biggest building that I got. It's like a three-story mm. one. Um, and you can see my other cottages or building is slightly taller. Um, but it's not too bad. I think playing Warhammer, you wouldn't give a shit. No. No, yeah, um, it's cool. And there's the inside. Like it's all done inside as well. <laughs> so, mm. you know, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm not going to paint the inside at the moment. I was going to say, <laughs> are you going to paint the inside? <laughs> nah, not at the moment. If I ever, for some reason, yeah. you know, want to use them in, I don't know, role, like Warhammer Fantasy Mordenheim role, if I ever get yeah, back yeah. to that or, yeah, or Mordenheim, I'll, I'll do that. But, um, yeah, so... They're a good change from painting, you know, Tombkin skeletons and stuff. And mm. I'm pretty confident that I can smash them out once I just double check how all the same colors go on this type of resin, whatever it is. And if it's all good, yeah. then I'll get a couple more done. So then we can have like more of a city battles, you know, which would be cool. Yes. How much did that um, sell you back? Yeah, it was In pretty, Aussie, I mean, I won't say it was cheap. Aussie it dollars. was probably, yeah, it was Canadian dollars. So it ended up being like... Oh, yeah. 280 or something posted but oh, that's yeah, post yeah. like i think 80 dollars was yeah. posted like it was so it was a couple hundred bucks up. but you know they're pretty yeah. big um i thought that yeah, was yeah. still pretty good quality um, yeah i think they're pretty good so mm. we'll say and there's so many out there it's all i mean they're all and then i am getting two done from that tabletop um is it tabletop empire it's not tabletop empires is it? it's tabletop um god this is where you need Josh because he knows. Uh, is it Empires? Tabletop. Tabletop World, isn't it? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, Tabletop World. They're the guys who they're the really good ones and they've got a Kickstarter at the moment with some like cottages and stuff. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Josh is in that too. So I've got that. Well, it will come once it's done. Um, but it comes with heaps of these little, you know, those Kickstarter extras. So it's got like like a little yeah. well and like and people. Oh, and, yeah, like, yeah. Like just all these little bits which you could put around or whatever. First, yeah, especially for yeah. that scattered sort of decorative terrain yeah. And stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, that's probably Josh had notes about here for his hobbies. I'll let him cover that next week when he's hopefully better. Um, what do you want to – so we've played some Warhol, though. That's the main topic, I guess. It's just mm. you're prepping for Shycon. And you're definitely dating yep. dwarves, so you've obviously been playing or putting together some lists. And so we decided to, oh, God, when was this? A week and a half ago, we tried out Warhol first um, yeah, because we hadn't used it. Um, Bumbled our way through it. Yeah. like, And we played, we, we deliberately did it that we're going to play over at least two nights so we didn't have to like spend yep. four hours. Now, we, we ended up spending like probably two and a half to three hours each time anyway, freaking around with some stuff, uh, but over two yeah. Yeah, two nights of it. Uh, but with days between the, like we got through what, two turns and then, and yeah. then did like yeah. days and then finished the game. And we're currently halfway through another one right now. Um, yeah. Just the way the schedule works, but it's, I don't know, it's not too bad. What do you think that, of it so that, far? I think it's good. So if, if people haven't tried it, it's actually, you could, Oh, and I've heard this from people that use it regularly. You can do it within that two and a half hour window. Oh, I think so. Um, too. Yeah. 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 It's just myself and Gomo, we faff around and check yeah. rules and check distances and just yeah. sit there and mull on our spells. <laughs> Drop my spells so, on the ground. Fucking where'd yeah. that card go? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you yeah. Can definitely. And we're trying to do that. I think this is a good way to try and speed up our games as well. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, definitely. It's got a little timer and try and... Yeah, and that's what we started. I mean, we started doing that in this last game, but I think probably got a bit sidetracked there too. But um, I think it, it mm. feels like it potentially is starting to get a bit quicker, but I reckon the next one we would yeah. do, we'd get it. Um, yeah. I think we start saying like the next game, what we'll do is we'll, well, it's like tournament, like two and a half hours and that's all you get. So yeah, um, 
But I would like to almost try still do six turns. So it'd be good to like lock it down and go, you know, hey, yeah. you've done your 20 minute turn or whatever. Yeah, um, 20 minute turn. You've lost your turn. You know, but I think sometimes your turn ones or two, especially two and three, are probably tend to be long and then the others go a bit yeah. quicker as stuff dies. So Perhaps same with deployment. That. People yeah. piss fart around for half yeah. an hour deployment. You just saw it. Just, well, that's just why. In the current list I'm playing against you, and we can probably talk a little bit about it, and I was starting to do this a little bit, but I thought to speed myself up and just learn the game and still play 2,000 points is just to duplicate a lot of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I've got, mm. in my case, I've got, and I wanted to try this anyway, i got two caskets, for example, or you have two, you know, you have two or, in this case, four scorpions or, you know, like so, and two yeah, yeah. or such. So you're really playing with, like, you know, effectively a smaller army but duplicated so everything's yeah. the same. And I think you can you – know and stats, you're doing that a little yeah, bit with your dwarves, two, two units of yeah. dwarf warriors, you know, like so. Yeah. Um, especially if you're tournamenting, it's just easier, even though it might not be the most optimal. I mean, it probably sometimes is because it's a bit min-maxing. <laughs> but, mm. yeah. Um, no. What – what do you um what's the best things you like about war? Like I'm liking the um the integration with new recruits cool that you can oh, just pull yeah. your army in. I mean that's hundred percent and the rules most, you know, it's pretty good. Like the rules are fairly clickable yeah. too as well, which I didn't even realise it did that. Um not all the time. Some of them don't, and then you're like, oh, I've got to go still get the rules from somewhere else. But um Yeah. It'd be cool if they standardized like the I mean, I am in the dev channel, so I could probably talk about this, but it'd be interesting <laughs> to try and standardize between, like, because Old World Builder's cool too and it's faster, to, I think, to operate. It'd be cool if you could, you know, at least have an, a, a conversion layer to pull that in. Uh, I guess yeah. it would be. It probably wouldn't be that hard as a dev to build, um, wouldn't be always accurate, but to build like a converter from Old World's JSON format to like, Battle Scribe, basically, you'd have to do, which is a bit of a shit layout but anyway that's tech stuff but it'd be cool to be able to use both and then sort of pull them into warhol maybe the guy's going to do an importer anyway because jason would be easier which is the format that uh, old world builders using maybe the dev for warhol's already working on it who knows yeah don't know yeah yeah you, you, you're losing me with the tech <laughs> yeah sorry yeah <laughs> I'm yeah. Just smiling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just I, be... I get what you're saying but yeah if you could use yeah. both it'd be awesome because yeah our world builder's good as well they're both really good tools and they've both got their pros and cons so yeah and they've only been out like i mean new who's been out but in terms of having old world support obviously old yeah it's all new so there's always these issues where something you know especially the the validation isn't always 100% accurate and then also just yep. sometimes the points are a bit wacky or you can't do a certain thing like you try to do it and you're like, oh, I can't put that thing on or I think it was the other day yeah. the orc chariot disappeared from orc, the um, old world builder so you can even add the orc chariot uh, as an option. Yeah. It was probably when they were working on the arcane journal um, but that's, you know, that's fine. That's what happens. Um, mm. It's good I to like, have multiple... Um, sources as well because it kind of just it it stops people getting a little bit complacent and lazy like it mm, it, mm. it drives that competition to have the better product um, oh that's totally true yeah 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 so you not like not saying we want <laughs> <laughs> not not saying we just want this drive yeah but you, you kind of do for you know yeah just keeps yeah. people on like, their toes i was like because i was like raving about old world builders game view which is really cool and then um yeah ASB, who like Angus, who's been on the show a bit, he he said that New Recruit has that as well, which I didn't even realise. Um, I can't. I think I did find it the other day. It's a bit different, but like effectively can do that sort of game mode as well or whatever, um, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, they're all um, nah, like sport for choice because that was one worry. I was worried right at the beginning when Old World came out that Games Workshop were never going to build an army builder like they did with AOS yeah. and stuff. Um, and I just, I just refuse to do them manually. I just, I'm a tech guy. I want it on the computer or yeah. on my phone. Um, Agreed. so yeah, yeah anyway, mm. well, do you want to, um, just talking through Warhol and our games and, and then moving a little bit onto your, what you're trying mm -hmm. to prep for, I can bring up, um, our first game and it's not so much a battle report, but. For those who – we basically had our first game of Warhol a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah. And I'm on the wrong slide. Um, 
and I took my Tomb Kings. Now, the Tomb King list on this first game I played was literally the same one that I played. Um, was it – what game was that? Was that against your dwarves or your vamps that time? It was the same list. Yeah, it's – I think it was or was it not? I think oh, I think it was. it was with my dwarves, yeah, because you had the oh, you had the cast. It was, but I back. fixed up the illegal skeleton archer. I had to have a skeleton archer. Oh, well. yeah. I, I just had skirmishes last time. Yes, yeah, so there was a fixing yeah. up thing, but it was basically the um, you know mm. the flying around um, flying around high priest with the other mortuary priest, two mortuary priests. I think. No, just one with the big block of um, tomb guard with the necrotech, and then obviously the unkillable dragon and some archers yep. and two scorpions and necro sphinx and a cask of souls yeah so i basically pulled the same list in that i'd played because i i think at the time you went you want to try this okay and so we just jumped on yep. um and that's what i realized how good it was to just pull the army in from new recruits yeah like, yeah, oh, cool. yeah already had the army list in there what did you take in this one again which is a bit different to what you're currently running now but i guess this is cool this is one of the first iterations of you trying to prep yeah, so I was just trying out a few different things. Um, wasn't a big fan of this in the end, but we'll get to that. Um, so I was running the Anvil of Doom um, as my general. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can take it as your general. I can't see anything that you can't. Um, I was yeah, running, you. and that was stock standard. Um, I was running a Demon Slayer. Um, with the rune of Altric the Mad and two times rune of Fury. Um, so that was basically, and he didn't have a great weapon. Um, so he was going to get rid of your armor save and he was going to go against things like knights um, and just be able to do dish out a lot of attacks without, yeah. you know, being having a, a save. Um, I was running another Demon Slayer with the rune of Swiftness. He, this guy had a great weapon. So hence the Rune of Swiftness. He was running a Rune of Fire and a Rune of Fury. Um, so this guy was trying to be a bit of an anti-monster um, hunter. Uh, we'll see how he goes. Uh, I was running two blocks with the Demon Slayers get the, Is it D6 or D3 for the against the behemoths? And D3. Stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously there's, there's issues with these runes cause they kind of mm. can negate one thing or two things, but it's like, there's almost this, you need three or four things to be able to get through yeah. to kill monsters and you can't, yep. you can't get all of them. Um, so you just, anyway, you tell you what you can get. Um, so yeah, I took two blocks of dwarves. Um, they just had great weapons and shields, um, just so that I could, use the shields for shield wall if I wanted or great weapons if I wanted to charge. Um, wasn't the best use of dwarves because um, drilled is actually pretty cool. I didn't really have any good banners on these guys. Um, so they were sort of dwarf warriors by themselves. If you don't kit them up right, cannot be that great. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see how they go. Um, I've heard quite a few people running rangers and reckon they're really good. So I thought I'll give them a go. So I ran 10 rangers with great weapon shields, crossbows, two units of thunderers with shields, a f two units of five thunderers with shields, just little little thunderers. Um, I had three gyrocopters all with a clatter gun and I had three units of iron drakes, uh, eight in size, um, with the champ with the troll hammer and we'll see how they yeah. all went. So yeah. It's my list. Yes. So because we I guess one downside of um so one good thing when you recruit is you get um the what's it called? The I'll just take the logo off. Um you get the ability to save the game and start it again. And it it's funny, isn't it? Like and again, hopefully people probably need to look at the tutorial. There's a few little things, quirks with it that I'm like it's probably right. I just don't know what I'm doing. Um, one of them is when you load the game back up, like you came in fine, but it still yep. doesn't really, it's sort of, I, I've been trying to work out how does it know how to start the game? Like it just, once you start rolling a dice, it then yeah. sort of goes, oh, who's taking first turn? And but the problem is when you yeah, load yeah. the game in, you're sort of not at turn 
one anymore and it's auto saving yeah. screenshots as well for like deployment and because it's making a cool battle report which i really like and for mm. those on youtube you can see the screenshots it's auto taking which is really cool um and yes you're right if you actually play fast and just get it done in an evening works fine but for loading it in after yeah. it gets a bit confused so hence what happened was i lost the deployment picture for this a long way to say that but <laughs> um the solution is you know maybe there's another way to get that right or just play fast and get it done in a day i guess like in the same yeah. session yeah. <laughs> um but you know whatever um it's probably i probably won't i don't know it's probably a bit boring to fully go through details here but basically like on my one i i can't even remember what my thinking was i was i think i was going to send the the tomb guard up the middle as much as possible and have my two leech priests near them to do like a rises and stuff like usual to try and and yeah. get them up um up there as much as they can um like bubble that reserve move if i had to and stuff like that and then i was going to send a flank attack basically with my big monsters um and i have the casket over on the side and i can't Try to remember what I think at the time I was the main thing I wanted the casket for was to try to get because I had nec necromancy to get some leash debuffs on your yeah like, gyrocopters uh, and then try and shoot it with magic missiles. So I think I sort of I can't I think I ran out of room in the middle and so I put it over to the side to think by then you'd put a gyrocopter or two. So I was like, okay, I'll go over there. I think this was mm. the game I realized that oh, okay, <laughs> it's annoying with a casket that you can only shoot the magic missile or have the car or, or have that buff up but then that the 18 inch what's it called light of protection or whatever it's called um but that's a fucking good it's <laughs> a fucking good buff spell or debuff it is i mean minus one to hit six up ward um and yeah. that's when i started thinking for the next game which we can chat about if we want is that's why i thought what if you bring two and have them overlap a bit you know um which is kind of yeah. cool um so that's how what I did in this. I sort of had my dragon and necrosphinx and scorpion out one side, my archers and stuff just holding the other. It was almost like a bit of a refused flank, if you know what I mean. Like wasn't doing much on the left, mm. trying to go up the right, and I just pushed on that first turn. And um, I don't think I killed anything on turn one. Maybe killed a killed a thunder or something. That was about it. And then you went crazy with yeah. your gyrocopters, like you do. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, I'll just quickly talk through just my deployment. Not going oh too yeah, crazy, I get but, back. Sorry, yeah, um, I just don't have a deployment. Nah, oh cool. yeah, oh, I do for you. So I guess. the <laughs> yeah, so the the big the big drama um, with all my units was fitting them in. Um, so because I had three units of eight wide um, mm. iron drakes, I kind of wanted yeah. that maximum frontage. Yeah, and then. I sort of had these two units of Thunder as a five wide that just that they just didn't have a purpose. Um, they were just mm. a waste in this game. Um, and I ended up blocking myself because I had too many too too many units to try and fit in. And um, so what what I've done, uh, this is a bit of a mistake, but basically there was a hill overlooking um, kind of one quarter to a third of the battlefield. Um, and what I've kind of been forced to do just because of poor planning on my behalf is I've put one unit of um, Iron Drakes at the front of the hill and one unit kind of right at the back of the hill. And my idea was going to be to move the Iron Drakes off the front of the hill so that the ones at the back could move onto it and then they yeah. could both shoot. Um, yeah. But the problem is there is, well, we'll see. <laughs> um, it, it was it was just poor planning. Um, and yeah, just poor, um, yeah, just just deployment on my half and just the synergy of the army probably wasn't that great. Um, and yeah, so basically I've, I've pretty much, I put everything in a big line at the front across most of the battlefield. And then I've just put my rangers, again, rangers didn't really have much of a purpose here, but they were um, sort of away from nearly everything except for Gomo had a bunch of, smaller units that he sort of deployed skirmishes off to the side. Are out to the left yeah which is all your skirmishes right. yeah the rangers were sort of taking all them on yeah 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 so yeah we'll get into how that goes um and then yeah turn one i've basically i've, I've done what i've 
said before. So I sort of moved the guys off the hill and the other guys onto the back of the hill, my um, iron drakes, so they could both shoot. And then I've just started moving my um, gyrocopters into a position. The gyrocopters for this game, I was really keen um, to try and take out your Hierophant. Um, but mm, the problem is, is mm. his fly and it can be quite hard to shoot him because obviously his next 20 units, so I've got to be able to be closest to him to shoot him. Yeah, And yeah. it's actually quite resilient for what he is. Yeah, um, so yeah, yeah. exactly. Because he has the, what was the five up save, five up ward, five up regen. Mm. That was heavy armor. Yeah, because yeah, he has that warding splint, yeah. Yeah, um, and then so I just I was sort of like moved up, positioning him near a the little bit. building all the time, yeah. so like he couldn't get yeah. a frontal charge or anything. On I could, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're pretty good with it. Um, and then yeah, it was your turn. Yeah, so I mean, typical Gomo style of not being a. I don't know. I always think. I, I mean, I don't think. I know I'm not that aggressive, and I probably should. But like, I didn't move up too much on. Uh, actually, you know what you did do on your first turn though? He's <laughs> troll hammered my fucking dragon and got four wounds on him. Oh, yep, yep, true. I did. Like, that's the scary thing. I was like, oh, crap, like this yep. um, flammable and then the no regen slash the um, – because mm. uh, even though you're re-rolling, what, you're re-rolling, you're still wounding me on – is it – what are you wounding me on? What's your – Twos. Twos Strength with eight. the re-roll. Mm. Yeah, so it's still yep. twos with the re-roll. So it gets through and then um, with the flammable and the drive dusk, like that's when you hit me there, I was like, oh, shit, I should have just pushed harder because there was a good chance I still <laughs> might not get the charge off, um, yeah. you know, my second turn, um, which I was a bit worried about and I was kicking myself a bit. Um, I couldn't get my... I think I either didn't get reserve move off or maybe just I didn't cast. I think I didn't actually. The reserve bubble, I probably didn't cast it high enough. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, all my skirmish dudes were just trying to shoot rangers, just to pip some stuff off. But yeah, that was about it. And then so, yeah, then I just um, charged basically that right flank. So the Necrosphinx and my dragon went into your... I think the what front, happened now, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, drakes. did I hit the first unit and they ran? Did you run or did I hit them? Oh, this is the end of the turn. So, yes, I hit your front yep. unit of Iron Drakes, uh, broke, broke them. They fell back in good order, bumped through your other Iron Drakes, and then I overran. Um, yep. In that process, my Necrosphinx has taken two, probably from stand and shoot, has taken two damage as well, but my dragon's yep. still just on four. So, um which is good, but I've got demon slayers in both, you know, both sides at the moment. So I think both, kind yeah. Of um, which in my head, I'm like, it wasn't a bad position for me because I'm like, oh, I've got these demon slayers here. So I was kind of, yeah. Now these pictures again. I won't dwell on the pictures too much because people can't see them anyway. But I think actually, what happened? Did I try to send the dragon into? into your warriors yeah, first and you fled and then I redirected both into yep. the Iron Drake. So that's what it was, yeah. Um, and I couldn't stand and shoot the dragon, so I had to stand and shoot the... That's Because right. when you redirect... Yes, you yeah. can't shoot. Yep, that's right. That's what it was, yeah. Yep. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so obviously that was it. The rest of my army just moved up a bit and I was just trying to kill rangers, but I was only killing like one or so. Yeah. My skeleton horse archers did charge one of your gyros, uh, yep. and they got stuck in there for a few turns, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah. but yeah, your other turn, then yeah, your dryers went after my hierophant by the look of it. <laughs> yeah. I was, oh, that, they just can't get it. Like uh, he's got the clatter guns D six, but the problem is he got like multi shots and then old mate, he's a skirmisher. He's isn't a he skirmisher. Well? So yeah. Low yeah. Character. I was pretty sure. So, so that's what we played him as. Yeah, you end up like hitting on sixes, um, and then yeah, he's just he's a tough nut to try and kill just with that that style of you know attack. Even even with doing the bombing run, I mean, you got d six strength three. It's just it wasn't it wasn't enough. You could pip a wound off here and yeah, there, and you're rise it back. it back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I can't remember if this was that game, but obviously at some point I got the casket off a couple of times as well at some point. And yeah, which made it harder to hit potentially as well, or at least hit the scorpion. I can't remember, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, yeah, you're two protecting it was down in my yeah. Oh, but so I didn't behind, know what to do with the yeah. scorpions. Remember that I brought one up, yeah, yeah, uh, with the scarab brooch thing, but ended up just trying to keep him back in the casket because I guess I was a bit yeah. worried. Like I'm in this mindset of protect the casket, pr- protect the casket, but. Really, like, A, it can sort of protect itself with the lighter protection. Um, yeah. And these people are going to yell at me and I'm just bad generalship here, but I just can't use these scorpions at the moment. I'm just horrendous at it. Um, and maybe it's a bad matchup. You know what I mean? Like, I can't – I'm feeling yeah. like I want to get my scorpions into your gyrocopters, but I just can't because they're just flying around and, you know. Yeah, You bring yeah. these scorpions on as ambushes or whatever and they can't charge, so they're just, like, by the time – you get them on and then they get shot next turn. You know what I mean? Especially against yeah. balls with Toral Hammer torpedoes and stuff. So I'm like, is this just a bad matchup for my my scorpions? And you don't have like monsters to killing blow and monster slay. So it's like, yeah, yeah. it's probably just a bad matchup in that regard for that yeah. unit, you know? Agreed. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. Um, um, what happened with the big combat though in your turn too? Because it looks like there was a big Yeah, so... Wasn't. Yeah, I sent in. Um, oh, the direct my, demon slayer. Yeah, both both demon slayers went in. Mm. Um, my first demon slayer, uh, who was the anti, like more infantry slash knight, get up. So he was basically having more attacks and got through the armor, but he only had his um, standard hand weapons, so he was only wounding on fours with a re-roll. (laughs) So that 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 was killing me. Is that the one on the left that's dead? Yeah, yeah. So he went into the dragon, yeah, yeah, and he he did not fare very well at all. Um, And then my my other one went into your Necrosphinx, and I think he did a little bit of damage, um, but not that much, but he held him up. Um, yes, yeah, I've done turn. one to you and, one, and you did one to me and then my dragon yeah, overran. The dragon the overran, drakes, but... yeah. yeah. So I've got yeah. one unit of uh, one unit of Iron Drakes are running and one unit, because I challenged with the dragon and you beat me anyway. Yeah, so that's they ran. the overkill. Yes, that's yep. right. And apart from uh, that, nothing much is happening. I don't think. <laughs> Nah, nah, I'm, I'm trying to shoot with my, my rangers on my... Yeah, just uh, out some of my on, the, on the side, slowly, yeah, yeah. They're, they're dying, but they're, they're slowly... Mm, mm. They're, they're all right, they're all right, but they're, they're expensive sort of things, so they're sort of one of these units. I can't find a purpose for them. I'm sure people out there run them, but it's, it's hard because you move them and then all of a sudden, you know, it's minus two to shoot. Um, yeah to hit when you're shooting it's just yeah so other than that i've just sort of like my, my warriors are sort of moving around to possibly get into combat um well one of my unit of warriors is going to possibly get into combat with your dragon and necrosphinx and then your big unit of um uh what are they called the tomb guard or the, the tomb guard yeah they're they're coming straight at me so my other warriors are trying to maybe I was hoping, I was hoping I could get you in a flank mm, and mm. pin you down, but I mean, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Just too far away. I mean, I'm moving yeah. my guys up, but even not like you know, it's halfway through the game and I'm barely at halfway across yeah. the board, and that was a bit frustrating. And then the dragon is on four wounds, which is probably not too bad for him, but the Necrosphinx mm. has only got two wounds left, um, mm. and you know, like hierophant like you, you just can't do a rise that far away and so i was like oh, at some point yeah, yeah. I fly him over there but i was trying to move him in a position to do something tricky like that but i just i couldn't work it out i think i gave up with one scorpion trying to find hunt down your gyrocopter yeah uh, yeah he was just moving up as well and um yeah i mean there wasn't a whole lot i think my archers were continually trying to shoot Rangers missing, not probably more not getting through your armor. You know what I mean? Like fives to wound and then not getting through your armor. 
And yeah. I'm just trying to bring this lone skelly horseman back to try and do an arise on him as well, just to bring him back so he didn't get the points. But um, yeah, yeah, I think he eventually succumbs. But nothing much happened in that turn. Like, you know, nah. killed another that unit of Iron Drakes died, and I went into the ones that had rallied or whatever. But that was yeah, about Necro Sphinx it, really. finally took out the other yeah the dragons. Sorry, the other demons. The dragon yeah. slayer, yeah. that demon slayer, yeah. That's right. So that's two Demon Slayers dead. Couldn't even take out Necro Sphinx. And that was disappointing. Mm. I don't know. This must be the... So then I'm trying to work out exactly what happened here, but it was something like, yeah, your guys took out that one horse archer. Your gyrocopter yep. went after my hierophant, put a wound on him. Um, yeah. Probably your Iron Drakes wiped out that that scorpion that had given up and just tried to get into the combats further up the board, like sort of yeah. the gyrocopter and went forward and then he got killed anyway. And then I ended up doing this weird thing. I think what happened was we killed your we your Iron Drakes that the monsters were in combat with lost, yeah. ran off the board. I got I chased them with the Necrosphinx, but I yeah. reposi I did a um, reform with the dragon. And in my mm -hmm. turn, then sent them into your warriors that were coming over to me. I think that's what happened. Yep. That we is, charged yeah. sort of down the hill into the warriors. Um, mm. And then this is where it went weird with the pitches. So for those on YouTube, I can't fully remember what happened here. But the giant, the dragon did kill your warriors, but they must have ran. But the way I've run, I've run off the board the other way. So I just can't fully remember. Did I get the tomb? I must have charged my tomb guard. Yeah, the, the tomb guard flank. Yeah, the so you because you had drilled. I must be missing so you, this picture. Yeah, that's yeah. What it was. So you reformed wide, and you went yeah. in the flank, and I lost yes. combat, and yeah. I did a runner, and then your dragon. You chased. ran from the highest unit strength, but my dragon yep. chaser he went back right off the board as well. Yep. Uh, and then the overrun from this bigger unit of tomb guard ended up hitting your iron drakes that were in the forest. Um, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, something along something those like lines. That. Yeah. How did yeah. I do two wounds to your um, casket there? By the look, of, not your casket, your anvil. <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> Must have been a magic uh, thing. Yeah, I'm guessing so. I think at I'm some point I realised, oh, no, it, yeah, it is. It's my Hierophant's flown over the top and probably did his magic missile into him. Oh, okay, the, yeah. The cool thing with him, and I think I even forgot it for the first turn or two because he was the skirmish. He's got 360 line. I think initially I was yep. trying to position him in ways to make sure his hexes and stuff could go off front arc. But, um, yeah, I would have had that spell, which is really good, the 3D6. So the 3D6. Um, strength 2, strength no armor save. No armor save. Yeah, that's it's an that awesome thing is little great. Spell. It's so it's, good. Yeah. yeah, and that that's the one I should be shooting at your gyrocopters, but obviously I just didn't get the yep. chance as much as I would have wanted. Um, yeah. Until you were going after me, and then I, I think I was able to get another one at some point with yep. that. Um, Tomb Guard. I don't know what, like you must. I must have given. You must have lost given ground, and then yeah. And then yeah, I didn't follow up, and, and then I overran. Sorry, I did overrun, but then I ran into your casket with my tomb guard. Yeah. Um, then my necrosphinx yeah. has come back on. Um, my dragon has yeah, come. This is your turn, I think. I think your gyro up the top killed the rest of my horse archers, but you were stuck in for ages. Mm. Um, your rangers took out my skirmishing archers. Um, <laughs> but, oh, I, yeah. I didn't have too much going for me at this stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, both of my – so finally near the end of the game, my um, – the cut the Anvil dies to my Tomb Guard, which then over yep. and catch these other Iron Drakes. And yep. then my monsters have come on. Um, mm. Looks like the Jaro is still trying to I, – I finally got my Hierophant over near them and tried to heal, but I don't think he did a whole lot. Um, yeah, yeah. Your Jaro is still trying to get him. Um, yeah, I think I, I just remember to eventually to I went yeah. in to the – yeah, my necro sphinx, my hierophant, and my necro sphinx take out that gyro. My dragon takes out yep. your other thunderers, and yep. and my then that was basically it. I think by turn six you had just the unit, yeah. of, um, one unit of warriors, the rangers, yeah. and one unit of warriors, and one unit of iron thunderers. And thunderers they were. Sorry, yeah, and a gyro with one wound. 
Oh yes, that's right. I didn't get yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, it yeah. was a bit of a bit of a yeah. I got pretty pretty punished. I don't think I took. I only took like your skirmishing little units off, and maybe what oh, one and, um, scorpion, two scorpions, one... and not much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um. But your next list, so yeah, I mean, this one, my, but my, my, we'll probably cover the current game another time, I guess. But um, yep. the yeah, I mean, those bloody Dine Drakes, though, they're so, they're so good. Uh, those mm. troll hammer torpedoes, you really got to get into them quick to get rid of them. Um, yeah, yeah. If you hang around for too long, you're going to like just, yeah. You know, they want yeah. little monsters and stuff, no worries. Yeah, you got to. The problem with having them eight wide or ten wide is mm. you kind of you want the whole frontage there for shooting, but then you end up being having this big, quite a big frontage, which makes them hard to put on the board, um, yep. especially yep. if you want multiple units of them. So if you're running two or three units, you almost need to have these little tiny. Is that what know, now? I can't five, five the game we're units. currently playing are they five or? Yeah, five man units. Yeah, yeah. I think that. I think that's just better. I mean. Mm. You look, you're look. you lacking a bit of punch for firing if someone goes and charges you, but you're really there for the torpedo, really, I think, most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's know. it. Yeah. And I found with the troll hammer torpedo, one good thing to do is um, you give him the uh, – he's got like his little cinder blast bomb or whatever, mm. and that's quick to fire as well. So if you right. do end up having something charging you, yeah, you, you can, can – you your other guys – yeah, yeah. So then – as as you know, they're not too shabby in combat. So if you do mm. send an ambusher into them, they can kind of take care of themselves to a certain. Well, they've degree. got that. What's it called? Is it stubborn? What do they have? Is it? Yeah, they got the stubborn. They have? Yeah, so it's just you get stuck on them. Yeah, like yeah, mm. which is um a little annoying. Um, what do you think you're gonna like? I know we're halfway through another game, and it's bloody tight i reckon that one like i think we're both sitting there going what's going to happen um we might cover it next week because i'm but basically we've got this yeah the dragon and and um much i brought chariots is sort of just in this grind table with three of your units now i think it is um but they're inside my double buff of light of protection from my two caskets so like i'm doing a bit of damage but you've got way more static res but then you're not doing much back to me but you're starting to Um, starting to and so it's just like oh can i kill a unit to break some of like this static units in next turn dwindling away slowly Mm. so um that's sort of funny but I guess the biggest thing, and I know we're still playing this game, but like your amble is there, and I think you need it. I think it's good, but I noticed you yeah. haven't been taking like fairly defensive magic stuff on it. Like, is that just points wise, or do you don't think it's like you know, like you know how you got the spell breaking runes, like you're not taking that on it and stuff. Like, is that? Mm. It's kind of one of those things. Like, oh, I don't know. I I've had them before, and I don't use them or I waste them. Right. Um, the only thing I might look at doing possibly is adding on that rune that does uh, plus two to yep, yep, cast. Yep. Yep. That's going to make it a lot 18, harder. That's isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Especially when you've got uh, the magic res. Oh, no, sorry. It goes to 36 if you, if you get 30. 11 or more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty It's yeah. pretty nuts. So, and it's not, a, yeah. it's not a remains in play. It's just the next turn. So that means if you get it off, yeah. then the next turn they at minus two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. The only for problem 35 is it's... points or whatever it is. Or... No, it's a master rune, isn't it? Yeah, master rune of uh, calm. But it's only yeah. power level two. So, I mean, to get an 11 plus, mm-hmm. uh, you still need to get a nine. So, but yeah, yeah. you could probably at least get the, the first the first level of it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I've, I've still got some points to play with. Um, and I can shuffle some guys around, but obviously not too much because my list is pretty tight, as yeah. you see. Because you, because you, I mean, it's the these... core that's sort of screwing you up a little bit. I feel because you haven't had these warrior blocks. Is that right? Yeah. Like, or well, you need them there anyway for your combat res. It's good that bloody yeah. rune, the the one where you're getting that plus three. Oh yeah, or plus yeah, yeah, yeah the extra combat res per banner. Stromney. 
Yeah, Stromny yeah. Redbeard. It's insane. Yeah. It is so good. Yeah. Um, some of that combat res, which we'll get into, was mm. ridiculous. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's <laughs> just the static combat res is just. I, I'm not doing wounds. I'm just static combat res. Just ridiculous. Yeah, it's starting to eat me down. Yeah, yeah. It's just um, yeah. I need to um. It's hard with the uh, like. I know. I like this. Um, the list that I and again, it's not the game that we just talked about, but the one that I was just doing where I had the um, double cask at the dragon and a block of chariots instead. Because the idea was, yeah, okay, they're not as scary sort of as the tomb guard, but they can actually keep up with the because yeah, they've got reserve yeah. move too. They can keep up with the dragon and you send them in together. And the, I'll tell you what, the real reason why I did it is the two. Um, the bubble for light of protection is 18 inches. So my brain went, okay, well, I can't, even if I deploy on the line, which I probably have to, to, you know, to get as much bubble as you can get, that's yeah. not forcing you to come half. Like I still have to get across, especially against dwarves, yeah. you have to, but other armies will be coming at you. So that's fine. But I was thinking, well, what's the best way to make use of the 18 inches? And that's to have really big bases. And the best way to do that is yeah. to have a dragon and chariot units because they've got massive bases. Yeah, they so do. suddenly, <laughs> you know, so like I can be 24 inches across the board and still be inside that bubble, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is pretty good. And so I think mm. there's something there with that. I mean, I know it's... 100%. 135 points, whatever they are each. Um, but this, I don't know, they're also sort of defensive like because if you if the bubble gets up and someone tries to go into them they're at minus upwards of minus two to hit just that guy as well yeah. when they're in combat with it or if they're trying to shoot it you know um, yeah so I reckon no they're interesting yeah you, you're yeah, something the question, there. <laughs> question is do they work against a magic heavy army who can probably dispel them a lot easier where well, you're struggling i guess yeah, well, I suppose that's where you might need to prioritise something to maybe try and take out that, mm. you know, unless it's a wizard on a dragon and then, well, that's a different kettle of fish. But, yeah, yeah these are these are the problems we're going to be facing and I, th I think everybody will nut it out to a certain degree. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we'll no. see. No, that's cool. Um, what else do you think? I mean, just to wrap up this main topic stuff is like that i don't know we haven't again we haven't finished the current game but like what what tinkering do you think you'll do for this tournament next week if any is it more just that like magic items and stuff like you're not going to be doing yeah massive unit changes Nah, i i really like the way that the second list is going mm. um i think you could probably agree it's it's a much better list than the yeah, first yeah, list i brought yeah. um yeah. So yeah, definitely just some tinkering with the. I was thinking of maybe dropping, but I, I couldn't see the value in it. Like if you drop the the um, oh, can't even think of it. I was going to say the casket, <laughs> the, the, the anvil, anvil. Yeah. and I'm um, taking a rune lord, but then you, you're missing um, the you're spells. missing those runes, oh, no. the spells, yeah, the runes, yeah. 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 the runes you play just and, defensive then yeah and then yeah it's going to free up 100 points but i'm like i, I don't think i get 100 points of value out of putting a rune lord in because a he's he's one less on um his ability to dispel so he's only level two effectively um and then if i want to make him better then i've got to spend more points on him so it's not yeah, really yeah he, he gives the yeah. you know a ap but it's like oh it, yeah. I don't know, it's just not worth it for me no I, I like the amble and i reckon there's something about having like war machines and an amble that make people want to try and get them but then you've got these blocks that are in the middle as well yeah. and the other cool thing i actually don't mind with that strong me what's it called the red beard one is yeah yeah when you line up against now admittedly you do have a long beard regiment in this new one but mm. then there's two dwarf warrior units. So you sort of think as an opponent, you go, oh, well, I'm not really worried about dwarf warriors. I'll try and take them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you go in there, but you don't realize how much static combat res it can generate. And then obviously if you get too close, then it's pretty easy for you to eventually get another unit in to help. Yeah. Um, and that's where it gets real scary. Obviously what I'm finding, it's hard to break them on one go like that because you also had, 
Well, you, you flip to shield wall, don't you? Yeah, so I got um, I got the the great weapons and the shields. Mm. So you just got to like try and work out what you want to do. Um, yeah, which not ninety percent of the time is going to be using your shields. It's only if you do get a tasty flank in, you might want to use drilled, reform, and then use your great weapons. Um, the only thing, like if I was a better player, I'd obviously need more carrying because I actually don't mind these carrying too, to be honest, in a way. But I was thinking, yeah, in the, I keep talking about the current game, which is just funny because we're still playing it. But um, <laughs> I went in with the chariots and the dragon into one of those, like your long beads are in the middle and then you got the flanked by the warrior units. Yeah. So, and I think you thought I was originally going to go into the long beards, but I went to the warrior, which then you fled. Yeah. But I should have. If I was a better player, I would probably think about that ahead of time and go, like, if I had a carrion unit, mm. um, that shitty carrion unit I had, could it have also been ready to, because it could have caught that, potentially caught that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that type of sort of setup would have yeah, been good. Yeah, because you can't Because they ended up play. having to redirect. Yeah, you can't double flee, so it would have been yeah. potential. I'm not saying it would have, but it would have been potentially been sneaky <laughs> yeah. yeah um that's yeah. you know three steps ahead which you've got to think in this game but then as yeah. a result i had to go into these long beards which had the whole sorry you don't get impact hit you don't get all this other yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like oh this is gonna be a grind and i didn't bring my chariots are not there for the grind but luckily the protection nah. spell helps a bit but yeah um oh helped a lot and i've <laughs> failed because i well you you know like like I did, I, I got confused. I don't know what it was. Remember I was like, I didn't bring a flying thing for my necromancer, my hierophant, but I've got a spell to do it. And then I'm like, no, I don't. What the hell? I've taken, taken a different law. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And so as a result, I haven't been able to get into um, range to get the, pl uh, what's it called? The the Plague of Rust off on your long beards, because that would have mm. really helped too. But um, yeah, no, it is what it is. <laughs> so... Yeah, you need oh. your fly, you need your horror from flying in under. You just need to be able to get that magic around where you need it, you know. Yeah, I'd I'd agree with that. Um, as long as you could keep him safe from all my yeah. shooting. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't mind these carrion that I've been that that little unit of carrion too. They didn't do much in the end, but um, if you had enough of them, yeah. Yeah, you know, just being able to like get in the way and you know stop someone getting a flank on you for a turn and stuff, um, and way more maneuverable than the scorpions. They're not going to mm. do anything, but it's you know, undead's just nice to have stuff that moves bloody twenty inches if you need to, or whatever it is. Yeah, no, they would be handy, hundred mm. percent. I'd almost say like, but do you, do you need those horse archers as your core allocation? Yeah, that's what they're... But they yeah. are good. I mean, they're just a bit tough against yeah. your dwarf stuff. Um, mm. Probably what I could do... I could do a similar thing with them, though. They could have been deployed better to do that other charge or to right, reserve move further up or... I don't know. Yeah. No. It's one of those things. Mm. Anyway, that's probably enough rambling of games. But, yeah, that's what... <laughs> I guess next week we can tell the listeners what's happening with the it's game a good game playing. it's a really it's good game funny. the one we got it's it's <laughs> yeah. nuts yeah yeah um what's coming up though i thought for those who might be well like especially you at like overseas listeners um andrew and i are going to try we'll see how we go we might try one this week it might have been tomorrow well actually today by the time you listen to this so it might not help this week but we're going to try to do like a on our time zone, like a lunchtime hobby hour stream. And then hopefully that's an evening for some of the US patrons and stuff, patrons and stuff. Yeah. They can jump on and have a chat just for an hour or something. And um, if it, if people like that, maybe we can try and, I don't know, work out a time every week or every second week and try and do it. Uh, that mm. way we get hobby done, but also connect with the guys a bit sort of in real time, which would be cool. So let us know if that's something you're interested in. Um, Outside of that, I don't know, man. Is there anything else you want to cover or are we all good? No, nah, I reckon we're good. And look at that. It was still an hour and 35 minutes, even without Josh's hobby hour. Was it? Oh. Yeah. Feels it's like it's good. been a while. <laughs> Here we go. 
<laughs> cool. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening to another Old World Fanatics. We're up to episode 35 at the moment. So that's bloody going ooh. good. Thanks for that. Um, love all our listeners. That keeps building, which is really good. Yeah, uh, thank you. If you... Yeah, if you're um, so inclined, please leave us a five-star review on your podcast software of choice. And, again, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe buttons, and click the bell, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, and keep an eye out, obviously, for our upcoming YouTube videos, like I just mentioned there. Uh, we're yep. Old World Fanatics on all the social networks, so just search for us if you need to get in contact with us, and you can send us a mail as well. Otherwise, uh, thanks for listening to another uh, episode of Old World Fanatics and thanks Andrew for being around yep. and I'll probably no, talk to you, you tomorrow and I'll talk yes. to everyone else next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks guys see you guys bye ciao